All right. Well, good morning, Greg. I'm guessing it's uh, still single digit temperature for you while we're it's recording. Four. four degrees. That's yeah. That's amazing. Well, we've got these uh, massive swells coming out here in in, yeah. in SoCal that are are. I saw the news photos of yeah. the just the waves crashing into every place. It looked crazy. But lifeguards are going to be Mayan working. calendar. What, Dude, what's oh, what's happening on the thirtieth, Brian? Yeah, that's one, two, a, three, one, two, three. That's the date. That's the date. I thought the Mayan calendar ended in two thousand twelve or something, though. I yeah, thought we were past that. Those gosh damn guys with the wild hair and the beautiful necklaces on yeah. ancient aliens yeah. said we're off by a you know seventeen point five oh, years. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe they weren't. It's taking all, account. all all that goofy shit around New York. They weren't right? taking account the the 365 and one quarter days that the earth is. So that leap year, which next year is a leap year, I think. Anyway, (laughs) not what we're talking about today. Not at all. Uh, so today we're actually talking about um, music and and yep. there's a bunch of great reasons why one you know most people are music fans we're huge music fans everyone's got their different music that you listen to one there's um we've we've incorporated music into so much of our different training courses for different reasons we'll talk about that but the the uh, the part of the reason there there's a there's a lot of science behind music and why people are interested in music and why there's so much universality in music uh, across cultures every culture I don't care w- when they existed had some right. form of music it could have just been like banging something together but they had some sort of rhythm in music and music if you're if you're not aware this has uh, for any folks who like who don't you know, play an instrument or who don't know too much about music other than they have their favorite brands they listen to is like music is just math. I mean, it is 100% just, just math. And so what the, the, one of the things I want to frame this conversation with before I throw to you, Greg is um, uh, music in certain songs become overwhelmingly popular for a number of different reasons, but one being they're predictable. So even you can go to different famous songs and they're literally sometimes the same chords, just maybe arranged differently or different style to it, but it's the same exact chords in every famous hit song. And that predictability is, is, is comforting to people. Uh, They like it. And then what, what like kind of the really top musicians can do what the really famous folks can do is they they can stretch the limit of it maybe they create a little bit of incongruence there with your brain but it still follows along that pattern and then that to you is then intriguing and you go wow that's different but it's still comforting it's still the same and then you can go out to the different ends of the spectrum on music with like i put like you know there's jazz where jazz is very very hard for people to get into uh it's kind of an odd form of music because it doesn't fit that same algorithm and the math is a little bit different right so so you only so many people can enjoy that but the and the same thing was like with music like like death metal right. um only so many people can enjoy that but if you play an instrument or you really appreciate music you can listen in because i listen to both of those sometimes depending on who it is but like People don't know this about death metal. They're some of the the drummers and the guitarists. I mean, they're some of the greatest musicians out there because they can play so quickly. They can they're put, doing like violin scales on the guitar. They're the drummers are doing things with just two hands and two feet that you you wouldn't think are possible. Right. So, but if you don't know that or if you're not into it, maybe it's not your thing. You just hear this noise, right? So you don't hear this. You don't you don't kind of you can't tune into the signal in there. You're just hearing all this noise. And so there there's a lot. I want to get into with music um, and why we use it specifically creating memory motion links. But I kind of want to start with, uh, with you, Greg, and kind of throw to you, if you want to, you want to start off, I know you had something in mind that you kind of wanted to bring up. Yeah. Well, no, I, I mean, I, I, I think that let's go to the science first and then we can dance around a little bit. So everything on your body is amazingly complex. Like take a look at an elbow or a knee. Okay. The more complex generally the more important so take a look at your larynx and how fragile and the location and if you get c-clamped the wrong way you know what i'm saying Uh, it can uh, uh, break your hyoid bone and cause all kind of different stuff folks look this shit up so i don't have to fucking repeat myself but let's take a look at the ear brian okay so we have the anvil and we have the stirrup and we have the drum why because the same reason I don't trust jazz. <laughs> there's there's a, a sound, and sound is a wave, and waves vibrate at a specific frequency. Your brain, run by the limbic system, this part of your processing brain, understands the difference between music and noise. So it categorizes by wave. 
by frequency and then seeks out those things that give it pleasure because the limbic system releases uh, 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 both memory and emotion endorphins and music increases the blood flow to the limbic system and then to the other areas of the brain and the body that, that need things. So if you want to soothe, soothe the savage beast, what do you use? Use music. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, reduce your anxiety, what do you use? Use music. If you want to increase your workout, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the timber and the repetition and the, 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 the strength uh, uh, training that you're doing, you play some music and you're in that zone, Brian, because it actually reaches into your brain and changes who you are. So if we were just going to go on, uh, for example, the Mozart effect, you know, uh, uh, the people that uh, make music are generally better than math. I think all of that yeah, stuff is for I think junk. those are junk science and, yeah. and biases. Yeah. But I do know this. I do know when you do surgeries with music playing in the background, people recover faster. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know that when you got somebody acting the fool, uh, uh, music in many cases, if not most cases, can relax that person uh, much more than you going in and saying relax. So, so when you take a look at why it's associated with the limbic, and why the ear uh, is patterned uh, uh, with so many tiny receptors to read those waves, it's obvious that music and math both search for patterns. So math is math and music live in uh, pattern recognition and analysis. You spend the, your entire uh, life doing the analysis, but the recognition is why music works on an elevator. You go in and you're it's a the, 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 yeah. the lady from Ipanema, yeah. you know the, the girl, yeah. from Ipanema, girl from Ipanema, you're Ipanema yeah. in your brain, right? Uh, uh, so uh, that's why a, a kid might not be able to remember his times tables, but he can give you uh, uh, you know every lyric to "I like big butts and I cannot lie," right. Other brothers can't deny, or whatever it is, the music that you like. <laughs> so uh, because you know lot. where I grew up, I'm a product of the music that I grew up with. Yeah, yeah, and I we all run are. around with the bass kicking on the the Mark Police car with the windows rolled down and singing along to every rap song. Why? Because that connected me to my AO. It, yeah. it was part of the development of me coming into an environment that was external to the way I normally function. And that's why I don't like jazz, Brian. You know, I, I have a principal problem with jazz yeah. because it confuses me. I yeah. don't know where it's going and I certainly don't trust where it might be going. And, and but the other thing is with, with the other forms of music, I can see it, I can feel it. Those waves speak to me. And, and guess what? I end up seeking out uh, uh, similarities, the patterns right. in those songs, you know? And, then and that's why we get that shit wrong too, Brian, because, you know, we sometimes invest part of our brain to a memory and emotion because yes. it's linked directly uh, uh, by electrochemical neurotransmitters to our limbic system. And we put too much faith in that. You said something on a, a, a show uh, probably a couple of months ago, or it was in a class. I don't know. We hang around a, a lot together. And you said something that's happened to me many times. You said that you were recounting a memory uh, and uh, your wife was in the room and you were saying all this grandiose stuff about it. And your wife took you aside and said, Hey, that wasn't me. Why? Yeah, because what we do is yep. we seek out those reward chemicals and then we assign those memories that we most like to the yeah. person that gives us that warm and fuzzy. Now, if it was wife number two, our brain doesn't categorize that. Our brain says there was a time with my wife that we yeah. got to do this. And guess what happens? The person you're with now that you love the most becomes that person. That's how music is, Brian. We hear just the first few strains of that song and it immediately gives us a memory and it immediately assigns an emotion and that could be good or that could yeah, be bad. and and it's 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 so powerful which is why it's always you know like you, you kind of brought up the example of you know you're studying and you maybe you have to do some rote memorization stuff and it, yeah. you got to repeat over and over again but like you know w you'll listen to a song a few times and remember all the lyrics because it, that exactly. memory emotion link makes it very sticky and and so the 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 other reason too why they're so powerful with memory motion links and what you talk to is that songs also are stories and and story or can be many of them are right um and and the idea is since a lot of our how we teach and even what we talk about on on here is storytelling well it's it's the oldest form of knowledge and skill transfer is storytelling for, right. for human beings right and so those those songs can tell a story and just like all 
behavior and just like art and just like uh, any anything else, um, any other story or statement, um, it's open to interpretation. Yes. And what people will take a song and assign value to it, and it will mean something to them that is so wildly different than the intent of the right. of the the person, <laughs> the, the author, the person, or the artist, yeah, or the yeah. Person it's that's, the, yeah, it's, it's the, the, so the, funny. the Jimi Hendrix, you know. Excuse me while I kiss this guy, and it's like, wait, no, it's like kiss the sky wait yep. which one is it and then the, how you hear it is how you then interpret it and so for when it comes to you know perception and recognition yep. um just like a human being trying to read the environment or read the situation you can have critical errors in sense making that takes it to a place that that is just wildly different than than what's uh the intent was behind it and, and, and so so let's let's go Let's go to St. Louis. Let's go to the 1960s. Let's okay. go to Fontella Bass. And, and everybody in the audience that's listening right now remembers Aretha Franklin's, one of her most famous hits, Rescue Me, Take Me in Your Arms. Okay. Oh, sing it, man. And it's the best song that Aretha never sang. Right. Because Fontella Bass was the one that charted. Fontella Bass, who is just an amazing vocal range and a great singer, folks look her up, take a look, was the one that brought Rescue Me to the rest of the world. Yeah. But you, because you categorized and felt the pattern, you immediately uh, uh, went with the, the leading horse uh, in the race which was at that time Aretha Franklin, so many albums it, out, so many it's, appearances. It was, she was popular at the time. It was kind of close exactly. enough to how she sounded. It was a similar Cognitively style. Cognitively close enough. Yep. And so guess what you did? You got on and, and you rode that horse. So not too much later, when we take a look at Jackson 5 coming out with one bad apple, don't spoil the whole bunch, girls. Give me one more chance. Well, Jackson 5 never sang it. As a matter of fact, the, the closest the Jackson name came to that is it was written by an old Mississippi jazz and blues guy, uh, uh, and his name happened to be Jackson. And, and George Jackson wrote that song, and it's very different if you listen to George Jackson's earliest recordings of that. Well, it was the Osmonds, and the Osmonds were relevant to a different sector of America. And all of a sudden, the Osmonds were searching, how do we hit this, Brian? So what did they do? They followed the pattern of A, B, C. As yeah, easy right, as one, right. two, three. And what they did is they came out with the song, with the dance, and still to this day, people attribute the song One Bad Apple from 1970 to the Jacksons rather than to the Osmonds. Why? Again, you said it at the very beginning, that frequency, that pitch, that vibration, it's not noise, and it speaks to a center of my brain. And when the center of my brain heard enough of it back then, remember, it was on a close and play or it was on a, yeah. a 45 that you were listening or to the with radio other kids, yeah or it was on the radio and guess what radio the am fm transistor that you held they replayed the top 10 songs that's over why it was over, called yeah. the top 10 yeah. over and over and over and and so you didn't listen to the artist you assumed it was the jacksons and the jackson five and so adding to the confusion you got george jackson people go so why is that important to you so I grew up in East Detroit, right? And and at East Detroit High School, my brother, Brian, who uh, I sent you a picture of his daughter at Hitsville, Brian, in, in case we want to add it to the to the notes there. Just It's important. Uh, Brian and I were going to visit Hitsville our last time in Detroit. And we just couldn't. Our itinerary yeah, was we drove past we were it. We were too busy yeah, yeah, in Coney yeah. Island. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I won't get into that story. <laughs> no. But uh, during my brother Brian's graduation, uh, during the year uh, of his graduation and the graduation parties, Bob Seeger played at East Detroit High School. Now, Bob Seeger <laughs> was a relative unknown at that at time. At the time, yeah. But he was very good. And one of the songs that Bob Seeger is known for at every wedding you've ever been is yeah. Old Time Rock and Roll. Give me some of that old time rock and roll to soothe yeah. my soul. And, and the funny thing about that is the connection to music. Who's it written by? George Jackson from Mississippi. That's wild. So, so the same rhythm and blues R&B player that was doing that Seeger picks up on that and uses that years later in East Detroit high school, which is right down the street from Hitsville where the Jackson five and so many uh, luminaries, uh, uh, little Jackie Wilson, Aretha Franklin, you know, all of the songs that you want to be able to think about uh, and why, because music like math is a common denominator. Music is a universal language that everybody can get behind. And, and you, sense music like you can sense what russian 
marching songs yeah. sound like. <laughs> you, you have a file folder yeah, in your brain yeah. because of the way culture works. And, and the word I was looking for earlier is endurance uh, at the gym. Oh. Music. Tell me you don't have a run mix. Tell me you don't have certain you're gonna work on mix, yeah, what for sure. you're going to do on a certain day. And I certainly do. And Brian, there's days that I do not want to go in the basement. In, in my house, the, it's not the Uncle Paul basement anymore. It's the gym. <laughs> and, and it's quite a great gym. I've sent you photos before, and I'm very proud of it. And you sent me some great workouts. Uh, 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 and, and guess what? When I go down those stairs, I'm a different person. And yep. for that hour and change, my world changes. I'm, I'm in there. Now, the days I don't want to go down, you know what I find myself doing? I'm walking the dog at four degrees and I'm singing one of my run mix songs. Yeah, your I'm, brain's... I'm doing it. My brain, what is it doing? It's yeah. reaching for those chemicals and yeah. the limbic system saying, didn't you forget something? So why wouldn't we use it in class? And we have over and over and over for a memory and emotion link. Memory and emotion links come from the limbic system. Why? Because they want to make it Let, sticky. So when you sense the pattern, let's can can you just just because I, I know we we yeah. talked about that before on different episodes, but but let's explain what we mean by a memory emotion link. Okay, and, that's and kind of the terminology because because you can even use it emotional memory link. Like there's different, yeah, but, yeah, but explain. It, it, those but, but, two but, things but, are inextricable. I just want you to ex please please explain for everyone kind so, of what you mean by that. The the world our lives, the universe, certainly everything that you're going to encounter before or after you listen to this podcast has to do with waves and, and frequencies. And it's either a particle or it's a wave. And it, as a particle, moves in a wave fashion. So what it happens is- can take is, on properties of both. <laughs> exactly. And, and, but, and yeah. you really do at the molecular level. So so stop thinking uh, uh, in only binary, AI can't save you fucking go back to the old way so the idea is this anytime something is important to your to your corporeal self your body and your survival the brain categorizes that in a series of memories but memories are hard to retrieve because they're spread loaded to different corticals of the brain so what it does is it adds an emotion now that emotion might be a taste or a smell or a sound or a like or a dislike thumbs up thumbs down and what that means is that when you smell uh, good food cooking, uh, your salivary glands and everything start working and you go, man, it's time to eat. When you smell a, a human male or female uh, presenting, uh, uh, you say, hey, it's time to go make love. Those things in your environment aren't accidental. They're prompts to get you to go towards something to mate with it or eat it or, or fix it or live in it or drive it, right? But there's also the opposite side of that that says, ooh, too hot to handle. Let's not go near that. Hey, right. that smells always associated with decay, right? And, and that's why my nose is, is so close to my mouth. So I don't actually eat fetid flesh or, 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 or fruits or any of those things. Uh, uh, and, and those memory and emotions uh, uh, are uh, stored and housed for survival in your limbic system. Why? Because your limbic system is constantly checking your environment, even though you're not aware of it. So it's constantly throwing a rock in the pond to see where the ripples go and what uh, 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 potential barriers to entry are going to be in your day. And, and so it sets up certain file folders uh, for you to casually trip across. That's why, you know, uh, uh, we think that we come up with it. We think that it's all human mm -hmm. thought and that we're running our day. But literally, we're knocking down a set of dominoes each time we do something. And those dominoes open a door to these three or four file folders that your limbic system hung for you saying, remember, it's cold outside, wear that extra jacket, that hat uh, pays dividends. Now, do we fight our limbic system constantly? You ever see a kid at the bus stop on a cold day and he's not wearing his jacket? Yeah. And he's freezing his ass off, Brian, but he wants to make that statement. So limbic system, memory and emotion links to lubricate your decision-making to a higher level, uh, uh, starting with survival, then going to the four Fs and then going to, hey, how can I uh, be a unique little snowflake? And that's why there's so much different music is because so many people right. want to express themselves in their own manner. And it's yeah. funny, uh, name a culture that doesn't have music. You know, there not name only somebody on the I, face I don't of the think there, there is, but not only that, but there's certain <laughs> there's certain ranges and certain sounds you could get into, um, like, you know, uh, that that are completely universal that are the same as some yep. ancient chant from a tribe is the same it's like literally like you can get and into discord the, the, music at the other end of well, the spectrum the, the the stuff our brain doesn't want to hear yeah that, that we will never categorize music you're exactly right and it it's culture 
uh, independent because wherever you go into that culture, these would be soothing noises. Well, these would be the, marches. There, there's, these there's, would be dances. You there's know? absolutely universal ones. This is also why we talk about yep. it. We're using this obviously as a metaphor for human behavior, but really like the, like it, you you remember the 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 NBC like ding 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 NBC. Exactly. That's no different than O E O. No, yeah, Wise exactly. men say like it's all yep. the same yep. range uh, of when you're getting into those different notes and what it's hitting, and and that's that's so universal to all humans <laughs> that it's like we're we're in a sense sort of programmed that way to have right. a, a little bit of, of 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 recognition of of what that is, and then type yes. to tie into that memory motion link. That's why those can be powerful, and those memory motion links happen with with a lot of stuff. They, and it, you know, you're you, if you're in a chaotic event or you're some really sad, you're gonna remember everything. Or you're gonna remember a lot more about what happened your brain's still going to fill in the details and it's not going to get everything but it's going to remember more you go to that comedy club or you watch that hilarious movie you remember all the lines out of there it, right because yep. it's it's encoded in a sense because of all those different electrochemical neurotransmitters all the catecholamines get kicked out during yes. that experience and it's basically helps with that myelinization process much much faster in a sense and 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 it endures longer yes so let's say that there are huge benefits to music because human memory is faulty and your brain has, your brain never knew we were going to live this long. And so your brain has yeah. this categorization where it puts all fun things together because they derive uh, the chemical reward for mating, for, for uh, uh, cohabitating, uh, for gathering together and uh, creating something that makes our lives easier or protecting each other. So all of those are good things. So that's why sometimes we get it wrong and we put those memories together. For example, in a dangerous situation, there are times that we distort sound mm -hmm. and everybody's gonna say, oh, well, fight or flight creates this. That's true, but your memory is still faulty. So your yes. memory goes back and creates a uh, 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 order where there was chaos. Yes, and sometimes and you, you it don't get that order wrong. Yeah, that. yeah. You said it earlier with with with, with uh, excuse me while I kiss this guy. Yeah. you know that's great. Uh, Hendrix didn't want to kiss that guy. He would have been fine with it, I'm sure. Yeah, but that sure wasn't what he was talking about, right? <laughs> uh, uh, so what happens is all of a sudden we have video now. And video isn't 100%. It's not the 360 uh, Vertra, uh, Milo, Axon, uh, and the people that would jump in there immediately and say, look at this. Well, you're calling it for me just like a John Madden. Look at yeah, the play from here. It, it, but we it, still have refs on the field, don't we? And the refs well, on the it, field the, can the, call the, something, the, right? the, cam the camera doesn't lie, but it doesn't tell and, the whole story. Yeah, either. exactly. So, so listen, you're a human being and a guy comes at you with a knife. And you end up uh, uh, double tapping the, the, the person and then uh, you write your report subsequently and the person asks you something. Well, first of all, we write our reports from an egocentric format and we've mm -hmm. been taught that since we were kids. Yep. The second thing is my brain categorizes information based on its relevance to me and its context to my survival, not to external sources. I don't write it for the community. I write it for me. So, so what did I do is I said, okay, well, then I saw the knife, the guy closed with me and I had no other recourse. Well, then all of a sudden we add an element. We add an external never blinking eye. And all of a sudden somebody goes, yeah, but look, he was 17.2 feet from you. Yeah. And you had a, a frying pan that was on your left. Yeah, but I never saw it. I never, I never saw considered it. it. And after the facts, ex post facto in law, what I did is I drafted my report and I improved my memory. I improved just like golfers improve their lie on the green. I improved my memory by kicking the ball a little bit downfield. Now, Brian, did I do that for a sinister fashion? Only if I knew that I was wrong. Yeah, if, if you did it me. intentionally. And if I did, did it intentionally it, but, but most of the time it happens unintentionally. Almost every time it happens unintentionally. Yes. And just like, uh, excuse me, while I kiss this guy, right? So, so the idea is that music plays such a significant role in forming a robust memory and emotion link. But even as powerful as it is and that our brain is tuned to it, literally tuned to that frequency and finding patterns, we still get it wrong sometimes. I, I think that's a great takeaway. Look, we get different people that tune in the pod, right? Some just to hear your voice, some just to see my great jackets. I don't know <laughs> shit why they tune in. But right now, if somebody <laughs> was going to say, so what? That's a big so what. Right. But even as profound as math is, math finds patterns and opens up. Math shines light in the dark spaces that scare us. 
So fear comes from the unknown. So mm -hmm. music helps us settle fear and math helps us settle fear. And how does it do it? Through a language that our brain understands and that's a wave. And, and so that frequency, that vibration, anytime that we see something that does that in our environment, we know that we can tune into that and use it in some way, shape or form. But we also know the other side of the coin is that we can get it wrong. So well, that's where we need to be as humans if we're judging other humans. Hey. And and and, that, and that's why I, music is such a great analogy for for a lot of that for failures in sense making. You know, you're singing along to the song, and then you find out later, like the lyrics you're singing are basically made up in your head, but they sound exactly like they go with the song, and you think that's what the singer is saying, and it's it's not. Yep. And, and think about that. That's in a sterile environment, hanging out in your at your house or driving your car, when when your attention and perception levels um are aren't affected by some major yeah. external arousal yeah. or chaotic event or or something yep. that's incongruent you're in a completely com so relaxed if, environment and that's happening right event. there in it and your yes. brain's just going got it close enough close enough close enough and it's filling it in and and there's there's um you know and, and what what happens with this too is 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 over time because now like over time and this isn't just me making this up a lot of people have studied stuff like this is that um you're less likely to um sort of expand what you listen to you you actually you <laughs> you narrow the bandwidth of music that you appreciate right. as you get older so as you get older it's actually harder for you to kind of listen to newer stuff or have something that's incongruent i because i know one of the things you always do is like you always have music on sometimes when you're working on stuff or yep. doing whatever and it's just like the most random so it true. goes from one to the next and like you're like where does this come from and i remember i asked you one time and you were like well you know, maybe like the students will come in with this song or someone shares a song with me or this. And and it's what here's what's new. Here's the old stuff I like. And it's all in there so that you're sort of updating your file folders as, as time goes on. <laughs> exactly. And, but but what you're doing with that too is like you're you're stretching your brain a little bit because it doesn't want right. that new stuff. It goes, look, man, we've been in this game for a while. I want this repetitive thing. This is the narrow bandwidth that I yeah. like. So let's keep everything in there. And and that's backed up by by science saying exactly. like, yeah, as you get older, you're less likely to introduce new music into your life. And so you really, as time goes on, like that repetitive thing, you want things to be predictable because as you get older, you you you, you kind of you know, hopefully you get, get wiser and smarter, but like you, meaning you see, uh, uh, you see the patterns more. It's, it becomes a little bit more easier for you because you've lived a longer life, right? When yes. you're younger, you don't understand anything and no, you, you haven't put those together yet. And then as time goes on, you start to go, okay, well, I know what this is. I know what that is. I've seen that before because you can relate it to so much experience. Well, it's the same yep. thing with experiencing music. And I'm using that sort of now as an analogy of how we learn, how we grow, no, how no, no, I love that. information. So, so look, there, there's something that we have to unpack that you just brought up that's really uh, uh smart and and uh relevant so i wrote down john sebastian john sebastian was the guy that wrote welcome back for welcome back cotter if anybody's old enough to remember that tv show welcome back at john sebastian at the beginning so how did he get his start well you got to start by starting a bunch of bands or writing a bunch of music look it up take your time but one of the bands that he played with was the rascals and the rascals had a song uh that was called uh good lovin Good loving, boom, know, boom, so, yeah, boom, yeah. boom, good loving. Yeah. It was very repetitive. So one day, Nico is running around the ranch, and all of a sudden, we hear him yell, toodle up. And then he's going a little further, and we hear him, toodle up. And so we go over, and he's dancing and having a great time. And we go, what's with the toodle up? And he goes, the rascals, you got it on your run mix. You know, even back then, yeah. you know, anytime we worked out, we'd have different, you know, music to make love to nine inch nails, uh, downward spiral. <laughs> uh, I want to F you like an animal or whatever yeah. your brand of stuff that usually for Prodigy. the church goers, Smack right? My, yeah. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, Nico had taken good love and, and in his brain, it turned it to toodle up. So who was I to take away the fun of Nico yeah. dancing around on that day on the ranch and correct him? You see, so that evolution occurred, Brian, but it wasn't for me to bring that evolution to him at that time. And sometimes we have to be beware by giving somebody the so what in a book, because like S.E. Hinton uh, was a female, not a dude. Mm -hmm. And that uh, uh, wasn't important to anybody else but me, because I didn't understand the perspective of the writing. You, you see what I'm trying to say? So that was a cathartic. That was a that was a brain changing moment for me. So the idea is that you kind of have to let people develop their style. And what you said about old age, you're smarter, but you're also fragile. 
And yeah. you become more scared as you grow older. Yeah. So those new things are things I have to investigate and I might throw a gosh damn hip, just like when I'm a baby and I'm learning and I need those people around me to protect me. Look, when you have a long gestation period or it takes you years before you can walk and talk and do those things in your environment, society has to take care of you. Okay, you're not just the, the foal that, that comes out of the mare and stands up on the feet and hours later you're running in the field and a month later you're eating solid foods, it, it, you, right? Human babies can't survive on their own. Okay, whereas many animal species could. So music has to develop in that young mind and then as the mind grows. And now, Brian, as we start categorizing things more clearly as we get older, we also have to deal with the element of fear. Right. Our, uh, uh, ultimate end. You don't know anything. You should see all that I learned and how important this song. Yeah. And, and, and right. How how many times do we do that? Do we choose a wedding song? Do we choose songs for a yeah. funeral? Yeah. Do we mark? I mean, music is so important to. It plays such a significant role in in both cultural and social context because it shapes our identity and it certainly shapes what we think our identity is when yeah. we're giving it to somebody else. You know, hey, I I uh, I, I can't write a song or play an instrument but I recorded Peter Gabriel for you and I'm going to hold up a stereo and play it in your window. Think of how yeah, profound that yeah, making, is. Making playlists for people, burn CDs, yeah. make it, record stuff on tape. You know, I mean, even as a kid, I would have to listen to the, some song that was coming out. I knew they played on the hit station. I had to sit there and listen for hours yep. and then, and then have a blank cassette in there and hit record when the song came on. So I could, could listen to it. But um, you know, and the, 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 sticking with that music theme for, for when people, you know, for musicians and why there's sometimes one hit wonders and why yeah. people stand the test of time. And a lot of times it's uh you know, one, they, they kind of find what their, their algorithm is, right. They find what right. works for them and they repeat that, but the really ones that, that keep going and, and keep going and are continue to be relevant and, and get, you know, big for a long time is like, what what I typically see is they 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 adapt right so I mean you know totally my, agree. Girl, my my girl Taylor Swift right who when she first became famous her songs then compared to now are are completely different now she's continued to grow and audience grow continue with the, even almost like the next generation listen to right. their music and the people that originally started with it and so you sort of grow with with your favorite artists in a sense and so it's interesting when when you see that because actually Michaela was telling me today, uh uh in in June she was thinking about it for my for my birthday uh out Aww. here in San Diego the the Foo Fighters and Smashing Pumpkins are playing together. I'm like, what? That's like my childhood, you know, young kid learning to play guitar, so you know, like, and, and Smashing Pumpkins being from Chicago was the coolest thing. And then, you know, Dave Grohl was in Nirvana, then Foo Fighters. And like, you yep. know, I'm a big Dave Grohl fan. Like, but uh, like so relevant. I, I, but, he, but, but that's what I'm saying. He's is, like Beck and his ability to just change. They, uh, but, but they, they and, 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 and they, they adapt over time. And, and yeah, so, I so totally they continue agree. to maintain that relevance. So I'm just, getting excited and I wasn't well, invited. Well, <laughs> yeah. but but just i mean you just think about that from from you know that's how humans survive or you had right. to adapt a species survives by adapting over time and 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 changing and and being able to kind of st stick with what so what made you successful or what made, right. allowed you to survive in a na natural setting uh, and and then yet continue to adapt to new incoming changing times basically what what else is out there and how things evolve yep. so they they, they yep. evolve and i mean I, I really just evolve is what they do but but you know they they adapt to whatever that that new thing is but s still sort of stay within and then you have certain people at like the right time nail it i i just thought of when we were talking about it um uh kenny loggins yeah kenny loggins wrote the themes and hit music and i don't know how many different movies from the 80s like everything from, from, from that narrow Footloose, band was of the 80s yeah. top gun caddyshack yeah. you know everything yep. like everything every hit song from those movies was and we can hear the earwig we can hear yeah. it yeah, yeah yeah and and so there's certain people that 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 meet it and you know and, and you know music is so powerful for movies like that's why yep. there's always a soundtrack to every movie because it enhances and, and really sets the scene for everything and it's funny because people take you know some serious scene or something from a movie and they'll just switch up the music and put something in the, and it's hilarious because the scene still works it just completely changes the entire meaning exactly. of that exactly. scene so it's 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 well, it's another first thing of all, let's make to... sure that everybody that listens understands that we separate music music notes frequency wave from uh music with words 
uh, because there's a whole bunch of music out there that we don't need to hear the words to be moved by it or have an influence. And, and I'll give you an example how it can go wrong. Uh, there's a commercial out. First of all, I don't understand what a blended whiskey is. I'll tell everybody right now. I, I drink, drink it, more but... than you've ever drank in your entire <laughs> life, but I, I don't get it. And I also don't understand, uh, uh, Hook, if you're out there listening, uh, Crown Royal. Is it the bag? Is it the odd that is. body? I, I can I explain that. I don't get it. And so, uh, and you have to for me. Okay. But there's a commercial out now, and, and I'm thinking that it's Crown Royal, or maybe just because I hate Crown Royal and I hate the commercial, I bunched them together, where they have a whole bunch of uh, uh, different individuals in a bar, and they're singing the chorus to Sweet Caroline by neil diamond sweet oh, yeah. caroline yeah bom, bom, bom. now listen that bomb 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 is the yeah. only part that's important that's the pattern that's the hook no no offense to to hook that also drank crown royal uh and his and his sack was was probably blue uh over the years but listen to me brian they play that commercial i want you to watch it and they play that chorus line like three times during a commercial it's two times too much because once you get the memory and emotion yeah. link Oh, I get it. I love yeah. that song. Move yeah. on. That's yeah. what your brain wants to do. Your brain doesn't want to stay in that moment for that entire period because do you know the rest of the song? Now you start feeling stupid, right? So the earwig, the thing that grabs us, the 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 uh, uh, memory motion link that we create, once we get it, we're satisfied, and then guess what we do? We actively search for those patterns and other things. We don't want to like. Uh, somebody goes, yeah, but when I was a kid, I, I would play my record till till it was a group. Yet yeah, the entire record, yeah. you wouldn't go back and play that one thing unless you were the Beatles playing it backwards for a, a such. Paul is dead. <laughs> you, what you did is you would play that entire song. Uh, I remember that uh, uh, one of my good friends, Ronnie Raswan, died young, uh, uh, actually a shooting uh, uh, so long ago. And uh, it corresponded with the song, uh, We Had Joy, We Had Fun, We Had Seasons in the Sun, mm -hmm. which was a French song, a dirge, like a funeral dirge about a death uh, in France. But some American one hit wonder added it to their B-side. Brian, I couldn't stop playing it. Why? Because it made me sullen in that emotional state that I wanted to stay for days. And finally, my dad came up and my dad grabbed the record player, threw it out of the room, grabbed the record, broke it and says, I'll give you 15 minutes, cry that shit out. And then you're done. And then he walked away. And I was like, wow, dad understood what I was doing. And I was trapped, Brian. Yeah. I was trapped in that emotion. I, 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 it, 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 that feeling is something for me to process. It's not something for me to return to uh, uh, and feel horrible. But then what did I understand as I grew older? Maybe that is. Maybe, maybe I buy myself flowers and I eat a chocolate and I read a chapter in a book because I need a good cry. So it takes time to develop the understanding and music is a perfect way to learn about yourself because it really is about yeah. your identity, isn't it? It really is. The music you choose. So, so here we are talking again about external and internal. Externally, uh, 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 think of uh, the most like Boston. Okay. I, I do Boston in class all the time because Boston was my love song, man. Uh, uh, I can think of, all of these tales that I had in a dark basement in East Detroit uh, <laughs> with Boston on in the background, right? More than a uh, feeling. So, more than a feeling. Okay. Uh, uh, and the idea is that anytime I go there, it's sort of a form of therapy, isn't it? Right. So, so uh, advertisers know it. Do you? Does the, did the band Boston expect Greg to be in that basement? Or was Boston talking about a broken heart? And I attributed those details and factors you get what i'm trying to say I, I mean i'm stealing liberally from other people's sudokus to create my own crossword and that's what is amazing about music music and math are the only two genres like like uh uh do you not think it's odd that even in countries where they read from right to left math is from left to right i mean that's yeah numbers profound. still go numbers this still go from left to, to right yeah to sit down and, and smoke a good cigar and have some brown liquor you know, the, the shit they talk about on, on social media, this should be one of them because music is so important. You know? it, it's it, it's it's really it, it really is. It's it's um it's central to a lot of people's experiences and their times in life, especially when you go back to when you're a kid and you're listening to stuff. And then people will just be like, man, I know every word to that yep. entire album. I know every yep. song by that artist. I know every song because you were in that moment in time and it was so powerful. And that memory emotion link really, really just just 
encapsulated all of that exactly. together. And so you you when you hear that, you get to sort of go back and relive part of that. You know, what I mean, it's a and, and and that could be good, bad. You know, like you said, like you know, growing up in a Irish neighborhood, in Chicago, like. It, yep. The the every the funeral when you got bagpipes playing Amazing Grace you're like this is the saddest like I don't care who you were like get it's just overwhelmingly yeah, yeah, yeah. emotional yeah. and you're like gee why do we got to do this like he's already dead and it's a sad thing we're gonna make it Fits, more, like we're just yep. gonna make it worse and worse and, and bagpipes always bring a rainy day don't they yeah it's, oh, it's always rainy dirt, so cold. so so you 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 know you, you've got all of those experiences that that are that are um so incredibly powerful oh i did want to the the crown the crown royal so the crown yeah, royal yeah. So is, tell me about that. is I got one was it's it's crown royal and so it's not very good sorry to anyone out there who loves this stuff but it was kind of failing as a as a as a whiskey and so they had a rebrand and they made that cool looking bottle and they put it in this the the little velvet purple sack and they oh re, just re, repackaged what it was and made it kind of and that just that just it, it blew up it after that sales. everyone loved it and so that that's all it was it was still the same stuff that was doing poor prior to that but then sales went up but you, you just because you, you brought up that's the advertising so and marketing so, that's how i got one for you happens. while you were talking that 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 hooked me so cream uh the band cream eric, yeah, clapton, eric clapton, band clapton yeah cream, right but eric clapton was ginger only with ba the band the little stevie winwood uh ginger baker, ginger baker you know, yeah. I, I think about all of those guys so my brother uh, was the only one in the house that had a separate bedroom. And it was more of a modified closet that he chose to be alone because he didn't want to sleep with Jeff and I. And Jeff was a sleepwalker. So I grew up scared of anything bumping at night because it was Jeff like a like an ogre looming over you with a big moon face and a butch cut. So uh, uh, Brian in his own <laughs> room- still has. Would have this, which he still has to this day. And he knows what I'm talking about. So, so Brian had this record player and he had these two uh, amplifiers that he hooked to the record player that you could move. And so uh, he found out that amplifier cords were just two wire. So he got bigger and bigger ampli uh, amplifiers over the year and wired them together. Oh, God. So one morning he gets up yeah. and Brian is playing Cream's I'm So Glad. Oh, now, great song. Yeah. This is the, the song. I'm so glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm, glad. glad. Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And then you do it in all this kind of harmony. That's the lyrics, man. My mom came unglued. She's speaking in her half German, half English with the F word, every other word. I'm glad he's glad, but I swear to Christ, if I come up those stairs, right? I still remember my mom yelling, Brian, that was 55 years ago. Yeah. And I can remember it like it was yesterday. That's what we're talking about, a memory and emotion link. Now, I'll give you another one. How important was cream to my understanding and little Stevie Winwood and all oh, that other yeah. stuff? So uh, uh, working with the High Country Drug Task Force, and we have this deal that's going down, and we're following not only the cocaine coming in from Denver, but being distributed, and then arresting those people that were uh, distributing it. Our intent was not to use personal use. It was to use weight with intent, right? So again, intent meant so much to me all those years. So at the one house we did the search warrant, I'm not going to say who it was, but it was a member of the band Cream uh, that lived in Vail and also had a a nice ranch that was outside of Vail. I think I know I go, who you're talking about. I go, holy fuck, it's you. <laughs> and and so here I'm having, I go, I'm so sorry. I got to put these handcuffs on you. I'm so sorry. I have to, I have to, I'm so sorry we have to do this search warrant. Listen, you were my 60s and early 70s. I love everything you did. I was such a fanboy that yeah. finally one of the detectives who's got a very distinct name that I won't say because they, they're they still around, probably those bastards, comes up to me and goes, hey, I, they, I'll take it from here. Yeah. He had actually had me step back because I was not thinking, Brian. I was like, holy shit, he's right. Right here i'm That's with wild. him i'm in his house and i was asking him to sign things and this was before the, yeah, the uh, uh advent of cell phones so i was like uh can i use the evidence camera and they were going no because i wanted to use the evidence camera to get a selfie with me and and this uh this person but think about that brian all of those all of those great memories all of those love making sessions all of those times we cried after a funeral are all thanks to the music that broke down to a wave and a vibration and a frequency that was unique in some manner to us. And what you told us at the very beginning, but it wasn't unique. It's a pattern, right? It's a pattern that's repeated over and, and over and over. And every time it is, we get hooked. We, we get brought into that. Uh, I, 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 I love this topic because both you and I love music so much. It's amazing. Uh, the variety of music that we listen to. And, and uh, I also thank you for uh, my, my playlist. Uh, because every once in a while you'll say, have you heard this? And I haven't. And it's uh, uh, sometimes a unique 
uh, take or a different take on a song that I know or I didn't know from a band that I know or I haven't listened to all of the stuff they do. And I, I like that, too. And you know me. I like obscure shit. I, I like Doug and the Slugs. Why? Uh, because, you know, I go back to that, and that beat uh, uh, took uh, Philly and the eastern coast of the United States uh, right back to the invasion, uh, uh, you know, uh, back of uh, English music back in the late 60s and 70s. I like that shit. I like influence, even though it was on a different yeah. timeline. It recreated that magic. No, that, that, that's why, like, I like I'll come across something, you know, randomly on TV yeah. and it's like a, a symphony. And, and you know, it's not my type of typical music, but would, especially when you watch it, because there's 60 people in there all playing different instruments, but they're all on the same time and they're yes. doing their own thing within this overall. And it's, so it's like, it's so amazing to watch. Like, it's it yep. just, and, and listen to, to, to how it, how it, you know, I, I just, it's so cool to sit there and go, holy shit, this is unbelievable. And it's taking you to these different places and you're on this. And because it's outside of brain. what I typically listen to, like, yep. I don't know what's coming next. So, but I know it fits within a certain pattern. So like, it's exciting. You know, it's like, Ooh, wow. Whoa. Oh, what's exactly that? Right. I didn't know. Okay. I didn't expect so, that. So uh, a good way of thinking of it is if you don't understand the role of a conductor, to an yeah. orchestra or symphony you haven't listened to enough music and yeah. and the other thing is i won't ever not listen to something a suggestion that the person gives me sean's constantly giving it to me his son now uh, uh is playing the guitar and, and yeah. just great christian he is crushes it knocking yeah. it out uh, uh and uh, uh my nephew uh is playing the drums which i think is an amazing thing uh why because music has been such an important innovative part of our life so i'll just say one one thing that that I don't want to bust like what we do in class and our delivery and stuff. yeah we we got a class but but well, there are songs Brian that we have people that we attribute a, a song to a memory well in why I, I we 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 use the 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 term on here what I think we can do at least one because we we have a little playlist I'll I have a link yeah. to it it's a spot if anyone listens on Spotify just a little HBP RNA playlist but and if you've been to a course you'll understand you'll it know or most of them there's some on there you might not but like. There's one that's powerful. The 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 should I stay or should I go? I think that's a good one to explain exactly. if you want. Do you so, you, you so, want, want to do will. that one? And, yeah. And, yeah, and 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 I will. So back when I was a cop, I used to look at every younger cop that I was training as an FTO. And before the San Jose model of FTO, we were just older vet cops, right? We didn't have that procedure. We just did it. You stuck with the with the older cop. And I would stop during an event and take a knee, and I would look at the guy and go ba 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 ba. Should I stay or should I go? Because if we and I would give them an allegory of what we were seeing play out. And after a while, that rookie would look at me and go, should we stay or should we go now? And, and I would say, you know, if we stay, there would be trouble. And they would say, oh, if we go, it will be double. The idea, Brian, was this is a critical moment. Yeah, and I want you to make sure you separate this moment in time from this convoluted incident. And I want you to think harder because this is about to change somebody's life. We're about to shoot and kill somebody or boot a door or ram or be in uh, uh, constitutional law. And so I would always use that song. So much later, we were training SEALs for a tip of the spear mission that we're going into a, a, a place in Afghanistan, let's say. And what happened is I would drop that every once in a while, Brian, while we were in classroom. And you remember, then we would do it out on the, the one bullet, one flex cuff, one question out on the range. And so here we are in this large interactive range and stuff. We call attack freeze. By the way, now they're calling that attack pause. Thank you. Uh, we all know where it started. But we call attack freeze, Brian, on the radio. And you remember, we would look at our team, the unit that we were embedded with, and we'd go, should I stay or should I go? What would I do at this moment? And we would sing that part of the song and dance around. And we even said at, at T3, if you couldn't do that part of the song and dance around the classroom, then you were shit. Get out. And, and because it, music was so important to this memory and emotion. Right. And we got a letter from that SEAL commander after that mission, and he said, we avoided walking into an ambush because everybody started singing that song just like we did in class. And they go, wait a minute, our brains caught on to something that we're not seeing. So they took a knee, Brian, and they avoided getting churned up. And they attribute that song, but it's not the song. It's the it's, memory and emotion link. It's the memory emotion that link that, that allows you to access yep 
is so much information and process it and not just that, but transmit put that. It a big file folder, a big never ending but, file folder. But also transmit that to another human being who knows exactly what I mean at that time. Exactly. And we've done that before where we explained that where we see someone who like, they're not sure if they're going to take off and run because the police yep. are showing up and they're doing the look around and we're like, okay, they're doing the, should I stay or should I go? They're, they're yep. weighing out potential outcomes. And in we their even brain. tell them and you, that and, sometimes. And you can see it. You can, exactly. but you, you, you can see someone doing the, yep. uh, uh, and they're yep. like, Oh, you're, you're doing the balancing act here. You're trying yep. to figure out. So that recognition of that allows you to kind of intervene sooner, de-escalate, whatever. But the idea is, is yes. that allows me to now what you just said, why you taught that other person that, why we taught that specific, why we teach that specific one in class when those people go together, I can just look at you and go, should I stay or should I go? And you know yep. exactly what I'm thinking, exactly what's going on. We know we need no further explanation to the to to their to make a decision. Exactly. And so that's exactly. it's so powerful when you can encapsulate information like that and and those and, and communicate it effectively. You know, I mean that the information exchange on that is just it's massive. And so exactly. it, it's just a drop on the tongue, words, which is why I love that stuff. Yeah, words are hard. And, and when we yeah. go into class and we try to explain things, we generally explain the same topic over three days, probably 30 or 40 times. Yeah. Why? Because repetition isn't redundancy. You have to understand the totality of what it is that we're talking about. So we consistently give you a photo, then we give you a video, then we give you a song, then we act it out in class. And, and then no, we go, yeah. there it is over yeah. there. Yeah. There's Waldo. Why? Because the more you see it in those different manners, why do you think we're working so hard to try to get Axon and, and Vertra and uh, 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 every other uh, place to, to listen to the work that we're doing with Milo? We're doing it with Milo because Milo's listening. You folks, you're not listening. What we're trying to tell you is these little pieces w woven into the great system that you have. You have incredible systems. They're amazing. will help your people in their critical thinking, and it'll help them respond faster when these situations happen because the memory emotion link doesn't have the synapses already lubricated with music and with memory and with chemicals and with emotion. So if you tap into that, Brian, that's more important than the muscle uh, uh, memory that we're talking about that they get wrong anyway, right? We're talking yeah. about how your brain processes data, uh, uh, reams of information quickly to get uh, 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 to that point quicker than a likely opponent or competition when, when you're talking about tying in you know um we, we, from from a training or learning perspective yeah. if if you make an emo they have to your brain has to make an emotional connection with the content yeah. yes if it makes an emotional connection with the and any i don't care if that's from a training standpoint that's from a anyone in gaming or vr you're will exactly tell you right. that because they spend billions of dollars researching that and and there's so much that goes into it to and put it's not one three but, second but, but, but what is it is, in... is it is it is it you know that the graphics have to be perfect nope no you otherwise no. otherwise otherwise duck hunt wouldn't have been would never have made it because you know Pong the, the, yeah would not have been exciting so, so it, it what it is is the emotional connection from the amygdala from exactly. your primitive brain to what it is that you're doing and it, it it your brain goes got it i don't care about all that other stuff the details yep. don't because the details don't matter to your brain it doesn't need the fidelity because it never has that fidelity it makes up that fidelity uh in your daily life so it's un necessary for the purposes You're of, exactly of, of right. realism right that's not what realism so, but is. it's necessary for the program developer who thinks they're on to something and i would say sometimes groupthink is so powerful that yeah. you're, you're not thinking well wow. and i would say do this i would say do this to everybody listening to us have yourself a challenge this new year's i want you to go out why is old lang sign still popular yeah answer that question uh why if we're watching a daytime soap opera or a scary movie Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Do we have that musical uh, uh, refrain just before something bad happens. How do they hook you in with Halloween or Michael Myers or a the character? In... Do, 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 Come yeah. on. And you know who that yeah. is? Uh, yeah. uh, John Carpenter came up with that music. Uh, uh, Escape from New York, John Carpenter. Uh, Escape from L.A., the musical soundtrack, John Carpenter. The Thing, John Carpenter. What did he loop into, Brian? He looped into that series of emotions that come from that wave that resonated at a pitch which is a frequency that caught you and it hooked you and every time you hear it now you go back to it uh jaws bump 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 oh yeah oh yeah boys yeah, and girls certain ones that's that, what yep. we're talking about so i would say do a challenge yellow pad it uh while you're out uh partying uh, safely and driving around and doing your own thing see if you can come up with 
uh, music that can lighten your mood or reduce anxiety and depression or uh, music that can get you amped up to get a better, more efficient workout or a, a harder workout or one that means something to you culturally or the context shaped you in some way when you were in high school. Brian, I'd say that would be a great project. You know, uh, come yeah. up with 10. And, you know, and you're going, I'm fucking human. I'm lazy. Well, then come up with four. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, one. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, exactly. I mean, we're going to get one out of you. Uh, <laughs> but then share it with us because yeah. I think it's that important. And I want to thank you personally uh, uh, and professionally because these are the type of, of podcasts that I so enjoy doing. Because, Brian, we just talked. It's a, uh, uh, what do they call that? The iceberg. We just touched the tip yeah. of this one. We, well, uh, each, each, everything that we brought so up, much point, more. Each point we brought up, we can you could get in and do an entire podcast on those. You could do an entire study so. be, because of of the the power of music and the universality and how it's inextricably linked with humans and our behavior and our emotions and every. I mean, it's like it is one yep. in the same. Humans are music. Music is is it's. It's so great because it's so analogous totally to how agree. we approach human behavior. Because look, there's a there's a there's a there's a math part, there's a science part. Hey, guess what though? There's a big art part of this too, right? There's Expression. there's there, there's creative you know, and, creativity and creation. involved. In oh, absolutely, it, absolutely. You, you, you can't it's therapy. Just, well, you you the, the, it's one music is one of those things where to be the great to be make really good music, you have to be both an engineer and an artist you you the, the really greats are are actually both now maybe the rest of their life is mess but but when and, it comes and you to have to music, know fun and pain yeah and you have to know uh uh you know uh uh longing and there's so much and and so if you wanted to talk about why uh we bring up math and science and music so much all you have to do is think conjunction junction what's <laughs> your function everything around us is yeah. tied to those little uh, 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 things that have played such an important uh, role to evoke those emotions and memories uh, in humans and, and their repeatability. Brian, uh, uh, right now, each of us, what, what would you answer as the best song? There is no such thing, man. Oh, God. There, I can't. That's, I, well, that's what even I can get like, it down oh, to 150. What's your favorite maybe? music or what's your favorite oh, song? What's your favorite band? Yep. I was like, well, right now, I always did the right now, I'm listening to a lot of this. And that's, that's usually good. my answer because yeah. it, it, I can't. I How could you ever do that? I don't know. Ooh. That's why when people are like, oh, this top 10 songs, top, I'm like, Okay, I can get. I yep. could probably give you top hundred songs that are my favorite. Like maybe I get it down to fifty. But like after that, yep. I'm like, look, it's well, all. Who are you going to cut out? Little Yachty. I mean, yeah. think about it. There are so many artists well, that are out there that we really respect and admire that other people have never heard of. And it's like, how do you make a list when you haven't even heard his album yet? Right? How do you? Yeah. So so there's so much more. It's like you know. Uh, it's saying, what's I wouldn't your favorite know where to kid, start. You know, I wouldn't. I would. I would know where to start. Being like, all right, I, let me start with what I'm listening to right now, and I'll go back. I love that. Life. I'm going to do that. I mean? By the way, well, I mean, you, because that's that's so that's so difficult to do. I, but I, that's just me when it comes to music too. When it's cool, give me, give me your yep. top ten. All right, whatever, dude. Like, I can't, I can't do that, man. I'm sorry. Top ten in this classroom right now, talking to <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, you know what I mean, here's exactly. Can, it would here's, be deliberate, buddy. Here, here's here's my my top ten this week or something. Exactly. Um, but, but which is actually cool. A lot of those apps now they do a year wrap and it shows you what you listen to over the year and what wow. how many minutes and which artists and it's like really spotify does that it's really really cool because you're like wow and you're like and 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 it learns like you know obviously what you're doing so it knows okay you it it, it you know because your phone does the same thing too so when it's time to go work out since i typically do it around the same time every day when you go to open up it suggests oh you, you want to open up spotify it's like yep and it's like boom workout mix it knows right That's because it's just setting patterns but so funny but it's 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 amazing and it's well, there's so much more we could get into. I would love to do the, the randomness, but but that's a whole yeah. special topic. Yeah, because well, let's do that. Let's let's because do that and endeavor next year. I'll, that, I'll 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 tease it out that you know when the first iPods came out, right? And they had the big block iPod with you put all the songs in there, and they had a they have a shuffle of everyone has a shuffle you know uh, mechanism in there, so function, you shuffle yeah. through your song, right? Well. The, the, and it was it was done when the first iPod came out. They had that on there, and everyone loved it at first. And then they were like, "Hey, I don't like this because it was completely random." So it was mathematically completely random. Well, guess what happens? They're like, well, I kept hearing these couple songs over and over again a lot, or then I would land on this and over the, and so it's hilarious because Apple had to change that algorithm. Yep. So when you do shuffle, it isn't random at all it's actually making sure it gets a good selection because if it was truly random you might hear the same song three times yep. in an hour 
right? And and people didn't like that. So we actually don't no, understand we talk like about that. That's a whole separate thing. That's uh, such to, a great to, potential to, topic. To, to, to end with. But um, but yeah, no, the, 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 we, we, we went through a lot today. We talked about yeah. a lot of this. I'll have some of the bullet points and I'll have actually a link to that HBP RNA playlist. And those of you who've been That's to one cool. of our courses, you'll, you'll love it. And then if you haven't, take a look at it you'll get some of it you'll even probably recognize some of the stuff or what we're talking about even we talked about some of the songs on there today um you know it, it's it's something that we could i could go on about music forever but but me and, too buddy and, and, and link it link it to to human behavior but um but that's that's you know i think that's good for today with we brought up enough but i, I would actually ask everyone listening if you have some feedback or some specific questions please one will obviously cover all that stuff on the patreon side as well but but that can maybe formulate what we want to do for that next kind of topic or d- drill down oh, deep yeah. into something because then we can bring in all the different examples. So um, do you have any 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 final words here, Greg, before we close out? My final words, uh, uh, kill the headlights and put it in neutral. The stock car is flaming with the loser at the cruise control. Uh, so you figure out where that came from and that'll write your January. Uh, this is a fun episode for me, buddy, and I'm thanking you for that. I yeah. wish everybody, including you and your amazing family, a happy new year. Yeah. Hopefully everyone's listening to this the day after new year's day and you know, you're, you're feeling a little bit better and ready to start the new year, but uh, happy we'll new be year, in, everyone. we'll be in the air. We'll yeah. be traveling to yeah. our next uh, team. and come see us. Look, buy a book. That'll motivate you to get your ass out of your house and come and see Brian and I on the road. We'll both sign it. We'll take a nice picture with you and you'll get some great training. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in and don't forget that training changes behavior.